We'll call this meeting to order November 1st, 2021. I entertain a motion to adopt. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, entertain a motion to adopt minutes of the uh, special meeting, emergency meeting that was held on October 26th. I'll second. That was another amendment for, to our permanent appropriations. Uh, we call the roll. Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge Denise Swinger, Dana Blotta, Marilyn Moyer, Jennifer Adams. <laughs> Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in a total of $192,115.44. Uh, from the general fund, $6,685.35. From the fire fund, $21,564.35. From the cemetery, $207.06. EMS billing, $6,288.22. Road and bridge, $1,654.60. Bond retirement, that's our new line item. $155,715.86. So will the bond retirement be, is that, is that the number we'll pay each month? Or? It changes a little bit. Every six months. Yeah, Every six months. twice a year. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the bills as I listed. So moved. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Yes. Or um, the question is, I don't have the, well, it doesn't matter, but the capital fund that's right above the retirement that's not there anymore, that we paid all the bills from, mm -hmm. still has $39,000 in it. Who potentially we owe? Uh, I don't think we owe anybody anymore. I'll double check on that. Okay. But um, I mean, I haven't heard anything from, you know, What's his name? Jason. Chris. No, um, no. Jason. No, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> she already fixed that one. Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah, Jason. I mean, yeah, I can okay. double check, but I think we've paid everybody. Okay. And, you know, because we put money in there from our, the general fund. Mm -hmm. So. I thought we, I'll double check. I thought we though. put just enough to cover the I stuff we that we. Uh, yeah, maybe there was somebody still outstanding. I don't right. know. I'll check. Okay. Uh, we will owe the money for that. Um, those new letters on the outside of the door. Yeah, that's not worth it. That would be that's that's $800 for that. Oh, yeah, that's not Looks very nice to you. Well, thank you. It's almost two feet below where it was supposed to be, but oh. Jason's supposed to check, but I don't see how they can take those off and hide all that glue or whatever. Oh, he was thing. drilling holes. He, was, he wasn't having a good day when I walked by. Drilling into the brick. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I thought it looked fine. I didn't realize it was the wrong height. Well, good. I'm glad you like it because I'm thinking that's what it's going to be. Because <laughs> um, that's one of those cases where the cure is worse than the illness. You know. Um, oh, Colin, I am not nitpicking. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but. It's just hard for me to believe that an organization this big does not have a cordless drill lying around somewhere. We did. And, and, and some couple hundred little bits that get to accumulate over the course of the years for such cordless drills. We had a drill. The drill walked away. Ah, walked away. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know if you have one, too. I have one new one. Yeah, we... 
We went all over the place looking for it. Even went to my house thinking maybe I had it. But I'm glad to report I did not steal it. So I, do me a favor, please, sure. and until things get a little bit better. Would you just remind the people who have the spending authority for the operation to uh, knock it off? Just yeah. I have just done. I have done so. Take a closer <laughs> look at what they're buying. Number one, do they need it? Mm -hmm. Fine, if they need it. Number two, can they get it cheaper somewhere else? I'm not. I'm not Mr. You know. Let's tend to tool man, but I'm pretty sure you could go to Lowe's and for less than four hundred and eighty-five dollars get a drill driver and a and an impact wrench or an impact driver and a and a set of bits that, that cover everything in a case for less than four hundred and eighty-five dollars. Probably a couple of bucks less anyway. And if you put those all together with all those other things that we get oh, yeah. around. Yeah, it was just uh, not always, you know. I mean, certainly on that one, but uh, not always for the cheapest bid, given our current problem of beta that we continue to have on the cheapest bid that yeah. <laughs> Chris Widener can find for us. So, yeah, definitely. But I, I've told everyone to. No, I'm not talking about general. the cheapest bid. I'm yeah. saying, you know, but yeah, that one, there's I, this new I thing called there was the also, internet, and you can go and you can. Yeah, I thought those were also tools, too. They're supposed to be also additional tools, like screwdrivers and all that. But apparently not, so yeah. I would not check that. That was also what's missing. Oh, oh we had a, we have a screwdriver, <laughs> and we have a screwdriver. <laughs> you got all bases covered. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> we can fix your glasses. <laughs> Something really big, an airplane engine. Something <laughs> on the engine. You can take the diesel engine out of it. All right, that's all I had, uh, sir. Well, it has been moved and seconded. Call the roll on the payment of bills. Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes, Are there items in correspondence that we want to tag for the agenda? Is, is that a question? A general question is out there. Am I reading through everything? Well, we probably need to discuss number two, um, number three. Maybe number four, Margaret feels like it. I have nothing. <laughs> I have no feelings. It's just an annual estimate. I'd like to <laughs> talk about the broadband survey. Are you getting ahead of yourself? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Utilities, MTA, workshops, settings, uh, multi project broadband survey. Yes, we all did the survey. We all loved it. Um, Maybe so. I'm not, I'm not sure what that was. Uh, plan drafting. Yes, that's the 40, 2040 plan. It's being proclamation general election. Well, that's going to be over soon. Price increases. We don't even want to talk about. We do need to chat about the signage on 343. The PDAC. We don't need to talk about. Okay, we got them. Yeah. Talk among yourselves. Yeah. I'd love to say that. Uh, I would call those, basically, they're all new business. Okay. Any additional agenda items that people visiting would like to? And, all right, let's go into reports. Fire department. All right. <coughs> Since the last meeting of the board, there have been 36 EMS incidents, four of which were in Bath Township, and eight fire incidents, two of which were in Bath Township, which included a uh, small building fire in an outbuilding on Fairfield Jail Springs Road. Uh, had about $15,000 loss. We were in our stuff stored in there. It's caused, do you know? Is it determined? Uh, it's still under. <coughs> it's still being determined. Um, hiring update <coughs> interviews with all three. Uh, well, actually, that's old news. Uh, interview with two of the three candidates have been scheduled, and one is still waiting to call back. 
for the uh, full-time position for shift lieutenant. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween, <coughs> we sent a crew to Clifton on Saturday night for the Clifton Halloween extravaganza. Uh, they quickly ran out of candy. There were little kids in Clifton and one had to it anticipate. Um, but they were able to restock and everything worked out well. And then last night we did our, uh, we tracked the haunted fire engine here and discovered that this is not a very popular neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> but we did send one truck out to hit some other areas. We went through all our candy and decided that we had to do it too, so that worked out well. Saturday was kind of, that's a good day, right? Saturday evening? For yeah, I mean, right during the day, but I think yeah. it was Did it stop? over. I don't know. The crew said that there were... It uh, rained about 5 o'clock. Okay. Here. Well, apparently they didn't deter them in Clifton. But the crew reported that the hot dogs, or the chili dogs, were burning. Which is usually the case. Mm -hmm. so when they're all the same night, everyone prefers to be in Clifton. It's more intimate, shall we say. Let's see what Carl was there. Well, that was good to ask for. <laughs> Does Clifton have the same number of um, non-Cliftonites coming as Yellow Springs does, having non-Yellow Springers coming uh, in? The guys thought that there were some people who had snuck in from Cedarville. Because Clifton went with uh, Clark County's Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And Cedarville, I guess, was doing Sunday or something. So uh, there were clearly more children there than <laughs> Clifton than Clifton. Children or, or adults pretending to be young. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, last count there's like 137 people in Clifton, and the guy said there were at least 50 kids, so <laughs> something doesn't work, but who knows? So. A productive bunch over there. <laughs> Not much to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did, hold on a sec, one sec. Yes. What did the board finally decide about the cemetery usage tour? Oh, not to, not to have the, there was, Request to have a hayride go through the Clifton Cemetery, and the board said not appropriate. But they did. They did. But they went around anyway. They went in the hayride. But not, assumedly not in the cemetery. I'm assuming it. They did. <laughs> Someone told me it was okay. They had a hayride. I know they were going to have a hayride, but I don't. Know, they told me they had a hayride. Right. Whatever. I'm not going to make a big thing out of it. All right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, two of the biggest concerns we have in the fire service currently are with mental health uh, on first responders and cancer issues for firefighters. So this month, uh, we are working to raise awareness. Um, and our guys and gals will be working with the Movember campaign, which is the same people as No Shave November. Um, we have to do it a little bit differently because no one can grow a beard here because uh, it keeps you from being a firefighter. And Georgia said she would try, but I was going to say, <laughs> how's that going to work out? <laughs> um, but a lot of the guys will be trying to grow, <laughs> trying to grow mustaches. Uh, I bought one for Georgia that has a little stick, and you just hold it in front of your face. But anyway, you can um, get those for the brewers too. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the, the Movember campaign raises awareness about men's mental health issues, uh, prostate cancer, and testicular cancer, which are both two very prevalent cancers with fire, among firefighters. So uh, we've got a special shirt the guys will wear, and mustaches may or may not be grown depending on, on the person. So um, should, be interesting. should be interesting to say the least. Uh, vaccine update, uh, all but one of our people have complied with the vaccine mandate, and he, the one who did not has a medical exemption form for a, from a medical provider, so he is functioning with restrictions. Uh, Good old John Doe, MD. Yes. <laughs> um, it was the vaguely worded letter <laughs> I've ever seen, but uh, the advice was just to um, and then most of our guys have started the process of getting their boosters. Um, almost everyone had their initial series ended in you know, February, so mm -hmm. I got mine Friday. I'm happy to report that nothing terrible happened other than my arm hurt, which I told a friend of mine who then freaked out and said, see, that's why I don't want to get the COVID shot. <laughs> Any shot you get is going to make your arm hurt, take a fritz, but um, <laughs> yeah. 
There's no arguing with some people. Anyway, so, but everyone's moving through it. Public health has it really streamlined down there. And actually, you can go to Dr. Brownback's office and get it through, is that right? through the state's website he's a provider here in the county. But I went down to the beautiful new public health building. It was a very streamlined and very um, organized process. Did Melissa give you the shot herself? <laughs> no, I don't know who she was, but possibly the greatest nurse I've ever I, I had a feeling. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. So, um, there's Good. that. Uh, we've been having a little issue recently at Anna College with fire alarms. Please. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, and I, let me preface this with uh, a statement that you made for candidates. That if you want to learn about the, trust, the Board of Trustees of the Township, read the minutes from years past because things just keep coming up again. This is one of them. Um, we've been to Birch Hall seven times uh, oh. since October 9th for fire alarms, which for a college that has 18 students or whatever they have is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of those alarms have been due to marijuana smoke in rooms, triggering alarms. Um, so last night we went and I'm not sure what they were burning or how much marijuana was being burned, but quite a, quite a bit. Um, but we also found multiple smoke detectors that have been disabled in student rooms. So uh, immediately issued a notice of violation to the college, uh, which is attached for your review. Um, sent it to the president, because she's technically the property owner, and uh, in an unusual move for Antioch College, she actually responded within 20 minutes and directed her people to deal with the issue. So, um, but Kevin went around and put new batteries and everything? Who does, who does that? <laughs> well, they only have four guys they can choose from, so, so it's pretty much Kevin. Um, actually, we were there this morning, because of course, you know, we were there last night, uh, about seven o'clock uh, this morning at seven o'clock, and then this morning at ten thirty. Oh man! Um, uh, so they replaced one faulty detector, and uh, but going back in time, I'm sure you and Mark remember the old days when under five hundred five point three nine one we could find the college, mm -hmm. and did on numerous occasions three hundred bucks a pop. Um, then the state changed that rule and said you couldn't do it in residences, and apparently it has been changed back again. All right. But now, I can't send the letter. It has to come from the board. So I don't think we're at that point yet. But I will have one ready for you just in case we get there. Uh, and it's just a letter from the board saying that, hey, you're going to get fined if it keeps happening. So, but I, I would like to give uh, President Fernandez a chance to, to work her, her magic. And from what I understand from some of the key players there, she, she doesn't put up with this type of thing. So we'll see. We haven't been back there yet this today, so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and hopefully some peer pressure, because there were a lot of very upset students that had to get up multiple times. So mm -hmm. hopefully they can take care of that problem for us. <laughs> some socks filled with soap. Or, uh, <laughs> Pillow gates still in the whole door. Yeah, that would hurt. I can't party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 right, and the last but not least, I forgot to put on here and just to update you FYI. I re did receive a uh, draft maintenance contract um, from Atlantic Emergency Solutions for, the, for maintenance. I mean, it's our intention is just for the big trucks, but they'll do anything that we ask them to when we're here. It'd be one day a week, oh, one day a week, one day a month <laughs> that they're here. Um, and uh, and then it includes the provision that we can call them in the middle of the night for emergency stuff when a truck is dead. So, where do they come out of? The local guy, service guy, comes from St. Paris. Hmm. Uh, not he's, too far. No, he's got a big truck. He's been here before. Mm -hmm. um, but it will save us money in that if we, I mean, right now we can call and if he's available, he'll come out and they charge us like three hundred dollars for an emergency visit. Uh, this contract puts the emergency visits down from one sixty. Very competitive. Is there a limit on the number? Nope. No. Yeah, they'll come out and it's yeah, eight hours, one and do all maintenance on the truck, so all that stuff. So So what what that would start what's January the amount? Um yeah, roughly. roughly. Um basically it's uh it's gonna be a thousand dollars a month probably. Maybe a little less. Um, it's for eight hours. He doesn't think he'll need eight hours, depending on what's wrong. Um, includes travel time, like every maintenance contract. But luckily, you know, he's coming from 
same parents. Not, fit, uh, not uh, McConnell is where they were based. Uh, but they are opening a new service center uh, in Springboro, which will also be nice. So, uh, so right now, if there's something major and you need the truck taken somewhere, they have to take it back to uh, McConnellsville, which is about two and a half hours or so from here. Um, so it'll be a lot nicer to have someone take it, or take it to Springboro. They're one of the biggest companies in the. It used to be Finley Fire Equipment, and then Finley was purchased by Atlantic Emergency. What's it called now? Atlantic. Atlantic Emergency Solutions. It's a very modern corporate name. It used to be Atlantic Emergency Equipment, but apparently the solution sounds better than equipment. So. I thought the place in Xenia was qualified to do equipment repair. I mean, just. Tunas, I mean, the, yeah, pumps I and stuff. I don't know about the pumps. These guys are all EVTs, which we have to work, we have to do for the fire trucks mm -hmm. under the NFPA standards. Um, we can double check, but my understanding from another chief is that they can do the, the lighter stuff without a problem, but the heavier trucks and pumps, they can work on them, but they're not so good. Atlantic is who Cedar Hill uses. And we've used them for pump testing, uh, pump repair, and always had really good luck with them. So that's a thousand a month plus parts, labor, and trip charge as needed. But that includes the labor. That includes the labor. Yeah, that's the labor charge basically. So the charge is. Okay. Um, and basic. It includes basic like, fluids. It does stuff. If you have, for topping things off, like if he oh. shows up and the oil reservoir is empty on the engine, they're going to charge us because that's. Like 20 gallons or something, <laughs> quarts of oil. But, but they won't replace the 20 quarts of oil. No. <laughs> well, 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 they will, but he's yeah. got a bill for it. But there's, there's a reason there wasn't 20 quarts in there, too. Yeah, but something would be wrong, obviously, or sabotage or some sort. So. Where are you on your current problems of equipment? Knock on fake wood. Uh, right now, everything's working. Nothing at Village Automotive? No. Not really. Yeah, I have everything working for Halloween. Chris. Well, let's not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, the, the ambulances are all doing their thing. One of them is having a slight electrical issue, so I think it's going to have to. After speaking with the village on the motor, it sounds like it's not going to go forward. It's doing a very bizarre. It'll just decide that the dash lights and dash gauges will die. You have to stop the truck and turn it back on. Which is. Something you shouldn't do when you're transporting a patient to the hospital. So usually they just wait till they get there, turns off, it resets, and everything's fine. But well, I'm not troubleshooting that. Sure. Yeah. So. That's all I got. Okay. Any questions? Chief? Um, yeah. Um, would you like to share with us the uh, current status of uh, the deduct? Sure. Um, your account. I spoke with uh, Public Works Director Burns this evening, or this afternoon, to ask him just that very question. So he advised me as, that it was up and everything was working and uh, we should begin seeing the credit either on this bill or on the next one. No, not on this one. Okay, so let's go with the next one. Okay. And I told him that I would advise my board of that. And there you go. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's lots of other outstanding issues, but I can't think of any of them. So. Okay. Cemetery report. Uh, since the last meeting, we've had no burial. Uh, it's Halloween. Okay, we'll it. It's done, right. So I thought it was done with the base, but I have to do it before. So we didn't know if we didn't get on your rocks, hopefully. In the pipes. In the pipes. Yeah. Next time you need to take a couple of days off, just show Brandon how to cut those things and have him go at it. I'm not sure what you're talking about. The pipes for the sign. Oh, the oh, different sections of the yeah of the cemetery will be laid. And I bought the pipes in a 21 or two or something foot length uh, because the pipe people were going to charge $600 to cut them. And <laughs> I thought that was a little excess, so. Uh -huh. Maybe not quite six hundred, maybe it was five hundred. 
still not. So I said, I'm oh, taking back. We got a saw to cut those things. We got highly qualified, highly That's skilled right. people to do it. That's right. Save us some money. Are you a paint or you powder coat? Are you going to do powder coat? Take them somewhere? Yeah, the place in Springfield just past Bryce Hill. They're going to do them all for like 150 or 170 dollars. I thought that's pretty cheap. You want them six foot? Uh -huh. Okay. This is all for just Glen Forest Cemetery, right? Yes, ma'am. We can. I mean, uh, there's no end to pipes, so you know. And if you get the cash, there's no end to the little plates that say. Yeah. That's something that would be helpful. Yeah. Sure. What's the one that's out there? Because we've got a separator. Do I have to put that together? The sign and the cap. Cap goes on the end of the pipe. Oh, I know that. <laughs> well, I was going to say the cap goes on the end of the pipe, but I think we might consider uh, at least putting a couple of spot welds on it. Because it's fire. Huh? It's cap. The cap is? I can try it for that. Because I could imagine somebody come along, some little fellow with a bag, you know, hammer. Mm -hmm. Not they, those, not they those off the top. slip on the pipe. Yeah, that's right. That set screws. I can drill a couple of holes and run them. So if you really do that, it would probably be a lot. Yeah, if you've got set screws, people aren't going to go to the trouble of undoing the set well, screws. I'm to take I'm the pipe off the pipe. Okay. Well, let's just I think. I'll do a trial. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We think it's a good way. Just is there, are the screws that are, are the screws that put the sign back on the cap? Mm -hmm. I didn't see them. We don't. I don't I unless they're, they're they may be in the bottom of the box. I haven't dug that far into there yet. Okay. Which would you mind taking that box? Would you? No, I'll take it tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. Some time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the big tree in Clifton is gone. Oh, that's a big stump. Place. That is a big stuff. Jeez. It's gone and maybe some ago. Did they put it all in the pit? Yeah, not all of it. Oh. It took some of it. That was the junk. Yeah. It was a big piece of meat and all things. So mm -hmm. we'll burn up. Yeah, that was a big tree. Mm -hmm. What do you charge you for that? It was 2400 right? Yeah, 2450 That's all I had. Road report. The trees on the high road are gone too. They were cut down Thursday. That didn't take them down by the right side. Thank you. So I, should I talk to get with her? Because they talked about maybe putting the cost with her. Oh, yeah. Or, I, I, I'm sorry, perhaps Don? Yeah, why don't I talk to her? Did she offer? Yeah. What is half the cost? Six hundred. They gave me a question and we think of it. So when they're full, I'd like to get back and start cutting the grass for a second. I thought they could get there the next day or two and get back and start running. Back to cemetery for just a just a touch. Um, and I've said this a million times, but I think sometime next year I'm going to propose that we try and, in the spring um, to, to consider having a, uh, a well dug, um, you know, out where that pipe used to be, the plastic pipe, you know, the water pipe, you know. <coughs> oh, in the natural? Yeah. Remember where that was? Well, one came up in the back corner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That black pipe. It's still there. Yeah, it's just on the ground. But, you know, it would be nice to have water for people now that there's good enough, fair amount of graves up in the front, plus the, the, the new addition in the back, which is going to, when we start putting trees in, is going to require some water to continually work on those. So it may be something we'll. We get power to put that transformer. Yeah, right. Now we've got the transformer, for yeah. sure. Okay. So, board. What we can have. A solar powered pump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or we 
could have volunteers <laughs> go out there and we'll, we'll, we'll put one of these things, the hand pumps, we'll put one of those in, and our volunteers will man that throughout the day to pump water for uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, note any of that down. Okay. Back to the roads. <laughs> I, I looked at them and reminded me, did we chip seal snip last year? Yes. Was it all the way? Yes. Okay. Cool. I, I know it was fog, but it just seemed like what was underneath the fog it wasn't very chip seal looking. Well, they chip seal the last year. They were both this year. Yeah. 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 Chip seal one year yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a zillion cracks underneath the fog. It's just what I was noticing as I drove over. Um, Golden Willow, that thing. I'm still that chunk. Whatever. Uh, hide. Uh, did you notice, I don't know if you were out today, but right by Mobine's driveway, there's a big limb that fell. No, I did not. A big limb that fell, and somebody pushed a lot of it away, but there's still a, there's still a big hunk of it near the edge of the road. No, I wouldn't have been there. Oh, okay. Can't go in the wood. Uh, Larkins, you might mow if you get time, right? <coughs> part of it, anyway. South River's part of it might be. Well, I'm going to start the land. You know, well, I grew it, I really need to get that dump grass up there. It yeah. Terrible. Yeah, it would be good. And actually, there's a, a, a North River across from, uh, well, it's not Joe's anymore. Well, it is, I guess it's still Joe's uh, further out part, you know, where there's the curve, past the stone house mm -hmm. going out. There's a fairly good sized limb sitting right on the side of the road, also. I didn't know about that. We'll check them out in the morning. We gotta check out the problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. I would like to just say something to, to Dan. My God, no. The trees and the bushes look great. Thank you very much. We do really work on that. Right, we're <laughs> <in. laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of soil out here. Is that <laughs> that's that's yeah. I was digging rocks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there were rocks in there. And well, we may hopefully yeah, now yeah. the village zoning office won't cite us for not complying with the, with the zoning plan of the, uh, the $395 zoning plan that <laughs> <laughs> was, was uh, partially approved, I guess. Okay, but anyway. So, huh? 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 <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fiscal officers report. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same old, same old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next yeah. item? Yes. <laughs> okay. Next. Resolution 2021-41, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to these of township, now therefore the trustees authorize amending of the following appropriations. Increased um, medical hospitalization in the general fund by $1,000. Increased water sewer in the le special levy fire fund by 400 and increased training and EMS billing by $1,777. I do not have that in front of me. But by golly, no, you do. My retention trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. And the increase in the EMS training this year was uh, Georgia's last semester of paramedic class and TJ's first semester of paramedic class. So. Do I hear a motion to approve this, to make this resolution? Mm -hmm. Are you making a motion? Mm -hmm. Mark Crockett moved. A second. Chris seconded. Any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Thank you. Any questions for the fiscal officer? Um, I don't have a question, but on my comment about um, the Bureau of Workers' Comp, I just today saw the available savings offerings, which I think was something to talk about. So um, I can look into that and let you know. 
excited to be with us today. Thank you. Great. All right. On to zoning inspector. Uh, I've issued two permits since I last saw you, both for accessory structures. Uh, one on William and Mary Port, one on Clifton Road. Uh, storage buildings. The maybe item of uh, interest, um, I, it was pointed out to me that someone was uh, renting camping spaces on their property. Mm -hmm. um, let them know that that wasn't agricultural use and they needed to stop. And we had a long conversation and they said they might appeal that decision, but they have removed their advertising, so they decided that it just isn't worth the trouble. I hope so. That would, that would be a painless <laughs> enforcement of, of the zoning. Um, one other just comment, doesn't really have anything to do with zoning, but just being out and about and talking with people. I've run into more than one pe people who would say, when's broadband coming to the township? We really need broadband. So it, there's desire out there. There will be you know, I, later in this meeting. Okay, so and anyway, I thought, I thought I'd relay those, those comments. I said it was just random conversation that it somehow came up. And I said, well, you know, I'm not really the person that has anything to do with it, but I'll be happy to let the trustees know that their constituents uh, in the mood for, for more connection. Um, the Zoning Commission did not meet last month because it's harvest time, so we won't hear from them until, until this month. And um, otherwise, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. I had something for Richard. Yes. Um, at our last meeting, Richard, uh, which wasn't the one that you would have been here, we discussed my meeting with the uh, head honchos of Agraria mm -hmm. uh, a week before, or whenever it was. <clears throat> and to make a long story short, um, they, would, they asked me if it would be possible that uh, you and I and a couple of them would meet together and discuss sure. issues. Anytime. <coughs> I mean, just about. <coughs> I said I was, I was more than willing, but I didn't want to speak for you, but I would ask you. So if, if that's OK with you, I will uh, I'll let them know and see what comes of it. Sounds good to me. OK, great. That's all I had. OK. Uh, Back to items that came from correspondence. Uh, township stimulus application. What did you want to say? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I mentioned at our last meeting, Denise, this was kind of roundabout somewhat in regards to the conversation you had with me about it. Um, I received notification of it. <clears throat> the, from NBRPC. Yeah, and, uh, and I, you know, I had two, and I've received notice of a lot of it, but it wasn't until I, I went ahead and I watched, or I listened to the webinar, I either watched it or listened to it one or two, but I did not know that cemeteries quali qualified. And I looked back to every single thing that I had, nothing whatsoever mentioned cemeteries. So I said, well, before I do a whole lot more, I'm going to contact a woman who gave the <coughs> webinar, who happened to be the director of ODOT or PUC or whoever it was that was in charge of the stimulus thing. So I figured, does she know? And she's the one who said, yeah. So I sent her a little email out and, and asked her if, if that is in fact the case. And she said, oh yeah, no problem whatsoever. You know, it's the same as anything else. You just have to fill out all the little block, the boxes in the application and, and We'll, we'll look at them just like anything else. I said, well, isn't that nice? So I then uh, met with our, met by phone, with our uh, county uh, engineer and asked her about, <coughs> you know, what she could help us with uh, because some of those things like the average daily traffic count is going to be hard to 
actually come up with on, a, on our own in the pavement condition report and a certified right of way paper, which she says we can generate from a deed, which I sent her a copy of our quote new deed, because we have a new deed for uh, the cemetery once it, after we bought it. And um, so that's supposed to work out. And we haven't heard yet back from Hensley, but I'm going to push them. We've kept till the 18th. I'm going to push them a little bit, hopefully, uh, this week. Uh, here, um, about what the cost estimate will be for the work. Um, and this is to uh, what's called full depth grind or full depth reclamation. These are exciting times. But it's they take this big noisy machine, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, like that. And they go down about, well, they go down about foot, 18 inches maybe. Well, maybe on that. Depends what the base is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. There is no base. I mean, there's no base. No base. That won't do any good to chew out dirt. Yeah, they'll probably be ten inches per foot. Yeah. So we've got we've got three lanes, as it were, that are just just grass and gravel, and three, maybe four, that are somewhat overlaid in some conditions better than than others. So we'll see what is overlaid of asphalt. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me, uh, Don. I didn't. I didn't bring this up at our last meeting, and I apologize if you felt that this was something that should come before the board with a for approval and for a resolution, at, you know, to enter into this agreement with the, with the county or with the state or something like that. The woman at the state, I mean, she was asked this question like three times. She says, "No." She says, "Just, just, you want to make the application? Go for it." You, that is, you don't have to have a formal resolution to have the yeah, application because there's there's no there's no commitment for for funds from this board. Mm -hmm. There's no commitment for funds from any board. I mean, not from the county or, or anything. So, um, I I didn't feel anything was out of the you thought that I was step running rush out over that. Um, I apologize. This is, but didn't you at the last meeting guess that this would be two hundred fifty thousand? I did. I, I have no idea. I I just know that the cap oh, for what you okay. can uh, apply for is two hundred fifty. All right. What comes in from with Hensley's, I have no idea. But anyway, so that's what it would be. It would be the, the, the grinding of new bases uh, and the overlay of, of that with a couple of inches of, of black top. And then whatever Hensley would recommend for you know, bringing up the other asphalt. There's a couple of those, like the one that leads out into 68 is, is the crappy. Name, that whole thing. Yeah, that could, that could the all South be. South Drive, too. Yeah. So we'll see what they come up with and, and the price for that. But got to be done fairly quick because as I said, the 18th is the, is the deadline for application to the state. And um, the, I believe the engineer, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe she'll, she'll make the application for us, I think. Not really necessary, I'm, I'm capable of putting the numbers in the boxes and all that stuff, but if she wants to do it, I will do it. So that's where we are with that. Uh, You, you marked that you wanted to bring up the November 9th. I just wanted to let Township Association everybody know that there's a meeting on the 9th. It's going to be a, a normal monthly meeting. It will be held in Zania at the library, uh, hosted by the library by the library itself and the Green County Commissioners who have done who have done that joint meeting for the past three or four years anyway. Always very pleasant. Um, I guess we talked about BWC, I just look into it. Uh, broadband. I'm confused. At, at, <clears throat> there are multiple, it appears that there are multiple county wide initiatives for rural broadband. And my understanding is the county commissioners have received. But they've narrowed down to three possible providers mm -hmm. uh, that they will pay. Uh, they'll use COVID monies mm -hmm. for rural areas of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm showing my tech ignorance. 
I'm assuming broadband means cable access. Yeah, it does. Um, well, yes and no. The, the, the three providers, two of them are, well, one of them is a, would be a, a fiber optic provider. Mm -hmm. One of them, Spectrum, would be a, a cable <coughs> provider. Uh, all, either of those two would be over 100 uh, megabytes per second download. Uh, well, I forget what the upload is, but uh, the Spectrum said that they could go up to 400 if necessary. Um, and the third one is a, is a, is a, is a wireless provider, um, similar to what they're doing here in the village. You know, where they have wireless modems here and there, everywhere they provide for. Uh, but their, uh, their ability to provide high speed is much less than the other ones. Their maximum is 50 up, five down, something like that. So the conversation I had with a commissioner uh, was that uh, that firm probably would be, might be looked at to augment the other, you know, perhaps the, the successful contract with one of the other two to get to areas which would be problematic to get to or expensive mm -hmm. to get to. Now, we submitted a letter of support for Clifton Connection to do something mm -hmm. from the county. Right. Is, were they one of the applicants? They were one of the applicants, yes. So they are no longer correct. They were in the run. Right. They were not chosen as one of the three finalists. Okay. That's, that was my big question. Okay. And then I have additional information, which I apologize. I spent all, the, not all day, but I spent Friday and I spent a good amount of time today trying to get with somebody from the Department of Ed, uh, Development uh, or Economic Development in Green County to give me some information about the application that the county will make to the state no later than the 8th of this month for their portion, whatever it would be, of the $250 million, which has been set aside for broadband in the state. And since I couldn't, talk, couldn't find anybody, I have no idea what it, what's required in that application. Of course, it doesn't necessarily matter to us. But part of the conversation that I had with the commissioner was it's their plan for, 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 to provide this um, service, that they would think of they're in, they're in Xenia, and you come up on the east side of Xenia, come up around Yellow Springs. This is, everything is outside of the municipal boundaries of Yellow Springs. There's nothing in Yellow Springs. You come up, and you go around up near the county line, and then you come down the west side, or east side, yeah, come up the west side, go around, come down the east side, and then head east into the Netherlands, Ross County, and Seattle Township, and you know, all those places, mm -hmm. uh, and then work their way back up to uh, Zeeland. So, but for Miami Township's purposes, this holds, I think, great possibilities, if that's the case, that if that award were granted from the state into the county, and if they awarded a contract with these providers, there would be the provision of broadband through virtually the whole unincorporated area of Miami Township. So what, what you were just describing, east up to the county line and then down west, that would be a cable or fiber optic <laughs> yes. arterial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With or without this wireless business, I don't know. But yes, cable or fiber, not, not AT&T, not DSL. Now, this is where I wanted the information from because it, it is so hard to get information from commissioners, offices, or I think from well, a lot of county offices, but be that as it may, it was told to me that this application would look substantially stronger to the state, they felt, if, if townships signed on to it and contributed 
a, a, a monetary you know, contribution as a partner. And so we, we would need to make a statement before the 8th. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the kind of money they're talking about. Um, I have a guess, but... So um, you're about to suggest that we commit a certain amount of money? No, I'm not. Well, then, I'm just what can we do by the by November eighth? This we, is our last. We can have a special meeting at some time mm -hmm. and make a commitment. Once we find out from somebody who knows mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how much it would be expected from us, and uh, well, when we had the public meeting about, about the use of ARC money, mm -hmm. housing assistance was a big one, and. Broadband was also suggested. Mm -hmm. I recall that. And didn't Hans Weiss send you guys an invitation to take part in whatever he's doing with the village? And he said the same thing. If the township signs on, it makes our our bid stronger. I'm not sure what the village is doing. But They're with them back. And they got So that wouldn't have anything to do with the township? Just, so They're not on when, the you your, when you put your... Um, invitation out for people to come to the ARP meeting and mention the, the funds. He said, I noticed he sent out a little board that said, tell me what you need done. So, so. Is that right? I have not, so I just I'm not aware of, I'm not remembering that. Because I've had repeated <coughs> conversations with him, so but I'm, I wasn't aware that there was a pending thing. That, and I didn't know what they were doing. I knew he reached, he reached out. There's a the correspondence. Well, there's the build grant that, that Village Yell Springs, Sugar Creek Township, and Zebra Township and City collaborated on. <clears throat> if we'll know in November, we're in November now, but sometime later in November. Mm -hmm. If that comes through, then there'll be a broadband connection from Yellow Springs to Clifton mm -hmm. along that pathway that's being created. Yeah. That's, another, that's another possibility. Yeah, I'll follow up with those ways. Yeah, please do. Um, he and that. you're going to find out something maybe from the Soon yeah, County Development yep. Office. As soon as I can. Uh, that's true. <laughs> so in the next couple days, we'll... Well, I guess it, it, that's already... Denise, if you're correct, and it's already, that bill grant's already been applied for, then... Oh, no, yeah, that was submitted two months ago. So it, yeah, that was something new at the federal level. Uh -huh. So um, we're supposed to know in November. So apparently they don't need any contribution from us. It's already been put in. Yeah, if it goes through, and I think it's 100% funded by, um, because we're a rural area, by this bill grant. We'll see. But we're, we're talking about two different things. It's two different things, things. yes. <coughs> Did you get a survey from Green County, Eric Henry? He was broadband survey, that one? Oh, that broadband that, survey, yeah. Yeah, that was. It wasn't. Well, there wasn't much to it. Okay. But is what the village is getting a grant to do going to affect rural Miami Township? In as much as apparently it may provide a line from the village of Yellow Springs to the village of Clifton. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't sound like connections in between. It's just a line. Yeah, it's just it's a line. It's just going for that connector. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, and then what we just heard was that the, the county proposal was to follow that same route along the, the border with the, with the north of the county, right? Come up on the west side of Yellow Springs, go along the county border, and come back down. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't make sense to both do the same thing. No, they, 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 both do, they don't both do the same thing. The, the, the building of Yellow Springs, the village of Clifton, there'd be a, a straight line, one yeah. wire, let's call it one cable, between the two. Whereas the county doesn't go anywhere near the municipal boundaries. It's on the outside of the boundary of Yellow Springs. So it would be somewhere the, between 343 and, and Clark County line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all the more reason to uh, do some cross-communication to yeah. make sure we're not being redundant if everything got approved. Mm -hmm. So I'll call it this way and we'll, we'll get what you can. From One question, isn't the provider for Yellow Springs not one of the three approved from the county? Correct. 
So that's going to be that's going to be redundancy. That's where you're going to run into problems. It's, it's just that situation right there. Well, there's no real overlap. No, but it would be easier to say if, if, the, if this group was a, would have been part of the membership, would have been part of Green County. Yeah. Denise, I, I'm kind of interested. <coughs> you have read that initial application qualifications for the this build ramps. I, I had read one similar to that, and it was very specific about. I don't, know, I don't know whether it was the townships or the, the different counties that were involved had to qualify economically. They had to be, a, un, you know, one of these deals where they had to be under the 200% of the economic, you know, the family poverty line or above 200% or whatever the deal is. And that very little of Miami Township would qualify for that, including the village itself. I don't know if that's the one or not, because I kind of put that on the back burner because I said, well, we can't qualify that. We're not rural enough, we're not. Yeah. Well, the definition of rural is uh, like under uh, 200,000 population, so all of Green County doesn't have that. Well, this so, was an economic Yeah, the, there's, there's economic components to it mm -hmm. that you get other um, scoring if you're meeting, uh, it, it varies from economic, um, helping people and economically or challenged areas, and I think City of Union was able to bring in some of that mm -hmm. to the application. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> racial inequity, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. That was another category. Yeah. So I think the collaboration of the three and three put different together. put mm -hmm. together oh, made great. a strong application. Yeah. I wasn't involved in the actual writing of it. They that was mm -hmm. it, got, it was a very intense application process. Yeah. I, I knew it was going on, and I knew who the participants were, but I, I, I never saw you know one piece of information about about what was going on. The, the last thing I had to say about it, and I wanted to make sure that, that you understood, was you know most of these applications are done on a on a scoring basis. You know, so many points. You know, you, you get seventy five points or above, and you get considered for it, et cetera, et cetera. The, kind of the OPWC uh, type type of thing. And, and this woman from ODOT wanted to be very specific telling us that initially this stuff's all put together and there are points because there's different there's different categories of you know how bad your payment is, how, how economically distressed you are, and, and all those things. There are points, but she says, don't she says this is not at all like the so WCs or the other ODOT uh, selection processes where the points are very hard and fast. She said, the points are going to be there, but it's going to be done by a committee. There's going to be like three different committees that review all of these, and they're going to, you know, they're going to look at the broad picture and all the rest of that stuff, and it's not just a, a cut and dry, okay, he's got 75, he's got 60, 60's gone, 75 gets the, gets the money. So that gave me some encouragement also. So, who oh knows? Doesn't hurt. Well, we try. <coughs> and we need to... Keep November 8th in mind. Yes, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, Green County 2040 land use plan drafting. Well, the land use plan was nearly finished a couple of years ago, and um, because of the necessity to have all kinds of um, public hearings and, and the rest of that, it was put on hold with the COVID uh, pandemic until just recently where now it's being, the, the uh, Department of Regional Planning is going to, it's not resurrected, but restarted, I guess, and to finish it up. And so that's what that notice is, that they're planning on finishing up and they will start having public hearings and local. Uh, is a draft of that on the uh, Regional Planning Committee? Green County Regional Planning. I'm not website. sure the finished draft is on it yet. I know they were working on it uh, when we. I'm not sure they wanted it to be public until they went public with it, mm -hmm. and they did not, as I recall, go public before the pan, before the quarantine or whatever, before the pandemic shut things down. But this was just last week that the, that the idea was to start it up. So we'll see from now on. 
So there'll be some hearings. Yep. As usual. Uh, signage on uh, State Route 343. Okay. Uh, a lawyer <coughs> contacted me a while ago, a little while ago. I'm sorry, who? A landowner mm -hmm. person uh, who's about halfway between here and Clifton uh, with a request. Well, there was two requests. One was to uh, reduce the uh, speed on 343 from uh, 55 to something that would be safer. And uh, I made that request of ODOT. This was like last year or so. And they've taken their good time. And they're still making that traffic study, to s the speed study, to see if there's uh, any justification for reducing that speed in any any portions of either in the whole portion of all 343 or in any portions of 343 that might be dangerous sections. In addition to that, she requested that no engine brake signs for big trucks be put in a particular spot, uh, which I believe is around Swimming Pool Road. I'm not 100% sure because she says that the big trucks hauling gravel from Cedarville come hauling down 343, which I know they do, <laughs> and start to <coughs> slow down probably five miles an hour <laughs> at best. You know, for that little turn, it's not a big turn, but it's the only turn anywhere near uh, where she's talking about. And I, I've gotten back with her. I said, this is a, "I want to make sure that that's where you were talking about," because there really wasn't any other place. But if that's the case, then uh, ODOT is uh, <coughs> able and willing to put the signs up for us. We just have to acquire the signs, and I believe we have to have a resolution the same way we did when. The part of 343 that the part of 343 where there is a sign, just as we enter the village limits, um, Postway asked for that sign to be posted, and the other one by the cemetery. So that's an ongoing uh, issue, which I will let you know <coughs> what's going on with that. Uh, that makes me think I, I meant to ask. Uh, in the fire and rescue report. Uh, I saw there was an accident <coughs> on 72, just south of South River Road uh, <coughs> a couple days ago. Uh, that was actually uh, an ODOT crew uh, putting in a new culvert uh, struck with gas line and it had not been marked. Uh, but they thought they could and uh, they marked somewhere else. So it wasn't a it wasn't an accident. No. no that, that I mean, it was an accident. accident. It was not a vehicle accident. accident. Yeah, I mean, we have very, I, I think people inflate the number of accidents. There are very few accidents statistically by attention. Um, 343 is, I mean, the intersection of 343 and 370 has been a problem historically, but you're talking two to three accidents a year. Oh, I don't think there's that many because and because they ran the whole thing for yeah. me. Five years we I had think one just great. recently on 343 at the yeah. curve, uh, but that was a distracted driver. So I mean, speed has. I think people leap to great conclusions that are not backed up by the data, and then they get angry and over that because they want to change speed limits, put in a traffic light, that kind of stuff. Intelligence too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I can, I can tell you that there's not a whole, there are other townships that have far worse problems. Mm -hmm. Well, I asked about that uh, 70, <laughs> 72 in the South River because there's a farmer who's twice sent letters saying, you know, that this is a big deal during harvest time because, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, truck doesn't accelerate that fast coming on to 72 and cars coming from the south don't see South River Road, but there's signage and it's right. the speed is reduced Yeah, and they say... Typically that intersection of the cause is someone on South River or North Clifton. Even with the rumble strips that have been put in and the 7,000 signs saying, mm -hmm. stop ahead, you will die, you know, and they're usually on their phone and right on through. So it's, uh, 
if we can get rid of the phones, that would probably make life a lot safer. <laughs> but I don't see that happening anytime soon. So. People never believe me, but since <coughs> we started well, the, the whole business with the Clifton Connector, putting a, a bike path through there, and so we spent a lot of time talking to ODOT um, about you know what's possible, et cetera, et cetera. But they consistently say that 370 and 343 are the two least used state roads in the state of Ohio. They have the least daily average traffic. Uh, they're number one and number two. And so, you know. Interestingly, I mean, with that connector, and people are like, oh my God, 343 is so dangerous. I mean, I did a check. There's been one bicycle accident with an injured person in 20 years. Now, it was a serious injury. But that's it. No, I mean, I wouldn't want to ride my bike on that highway just because, you know. But, yeah. again, the numbers don't back up people's perception. Yeah. So. Okay. Lots of dash hopes when they're connected. Right? <laughs> Old business. Uh, we've got notice that the Kingwood Solar uh, proposal, and Jennifer, you might get more detail, but the staff of the um, Ohio Power Siding Board has recommended that the Power Siding Board uh, refuse certification of the proposal hurt. <clears throat> the main contract or main arrangement is called a certificate to, to build, something like that. So that's why I said certification. Um, do you want to add anything? No, I think you have it right. It's a the staff does an investigation and provides a recommendation to the board um, based on the eight criteria that are set in the revised code. The criteria that they found that the application didn't meet was the one for public interest, convenience, and necessity. Um, and then in the in the staff report, they cite why, um, and they have <coughs> a denial. Now that doesn't mean that the board will follow along with that, and the hearings will proceed. Um, and then the board has to make, you know, a ruling based on all the information that they've been provided. So the next hearing is November 15th uh, at the fairgrounds here at 6 p.m. That's the public, the local public hearing. Uh, and then the adjudicatory hearings start December 13th um, in Columbus. So I think that's where we are. So as interveners, the townships... will be part of the December hearings, individual citizens or others, whoever hasn't already become a formal intervener, uh, would testify on the 14th, November 14th, uh, 15th. 15th, yeah. Yeah, if you're listed as an intervening party uh, or individual, you cannot testify at the local public hearing. <coughs> The interveners do. Um, now it sounds like it's a long hearing, so not everybody will be testifying on December 13th. But that's when it begins. And on the 15th, you can go and actually say something, or you can also provide a written information to them. You don't have to speak in front of everybody that's there if you don't want to. That is correct. You can provide written testimony instead of uh, oral testimony. There is the possibility of public hearing that you will be asked questions by the, the people conducting the hearing. That is correct. They typically, so we've attended many, uh, just to get an idea of how they work. They typically don't ask too many questions. They'll ask, you know, what your connection to the area is usually. Um, just seeing if you're legitimate, so to speak. Sure. Um, or, you know, why you're, you're testifying. But most people will tell you why they're testifying. Um, and that's pretty much it. They don't ask a lot of questions. Okay. <clears throat> Jennifer, not to put you on the spot, but are you aware of the other project that <clears throat> the, the staff recommended that, that, they, that they not permit? Semi-familiar. That's the Birch project yeah. up in Lima. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I did not study that denial, but I have been told by others in the group that it has a lot to do with, um, they have old mines of some oil wells or something mm. up there. Gas wells. Gas, okay. That, that is contributing to the, mm. the siting dilemma up there. But again, same thing. Their hearing, their public hearing, I think, is November 5th. Um, and they'll go through the adjudicatory hearings as well, so it'll still go through the, the full process. Okay. Is coming for, for them to do this? Recommend it might be? No, no. Um, we've, we looked through the case records and we also asked our attorney how common that was, and apparently it's not, but we don't know, we don't know how meaningful it is at this point, just because mm -hmm. we don't see that, we haven't seen the board's result in connection with that recommendation. So. Yeah, right. And, and the, of the eight criteria that uh, need to be met, that's the, the most open-ended, vaguely worded one. Oh, sorry. I was impressed on reading the comments from staff on that criteria that said they should deny. That they were the, the number of serious um, Let's call, let's call it interveners, but the, the township trustees from all three townships had expressed concern. The county had expressed concern. Other bodies with legitimacy have all expressed concerns that that had made a big difference in their, their decision. So I think that if the group here can pat themselves on the back, they're having an effect. Definitely. Yes, and a few um, folks that I have spoken with um, your constituents, really, they're they're very grateful for what you guys have done and the county has done so far in list, just listening um, and, and doing following the path, the path that's set forward with the OPSB. So we appreciate that. Don, just FYI, myself, Chief Miller of Cedarville, and Chief Beagle of Zinga Township have been invited to the November 15th meeting to talk about fire safety. Well, aren't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, of which there really are not. <laughs> it's actually better to have, from our standpoint, you know, one concentrated place on everyone's roof. So. But we'll be there. <laughs> Any other business? Well, this being election eve, I want to wish all. Candidates. Uh, good luck tomorrow. It, it's unusual. I don't remember where I saw. I think I saw it. Um, it's unusual the day before an election that to have candidates at this meeting. I say hope they've fulfilled their. Yes, not dark yet. <laughs> 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 